Our biggest problem in Washington is corruption. It is giant corporations that have taken our government and that are holding it by the throat. Ooh, quotes from last night. Quote, if there is anybody here that thinks corporate America gives a damn about the average American worker, you are mistaken. Ha ha ha. Woo, Marcus Conti reporting. What a debate. Wow. Was not expecting to, to be... There was a lot of dead air. There was a lot of, a lot of downtime in between. But man... You filter through for the gems, and it was in there. It was in there. I want to go through it. I'll go through each uh, each player, the the winners, the losers, and um, give you my 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 psychic analysis, my psychic journalistic analysis of what I saw, because I am very important, <laughs> just like you are. We're all important. Our our voice. Our opinions matter. So that first quote, our biggest problem in Washington is corruption. It is giant corporations that have taken our government and that are holding it by the throat. Ooh, Elizabeth Warren. Woo, fucking Elizabeth Warren. You didn't hear Trump say that. <laughs> you didn't hear Ted, Ted Cruz say that. Well, or Marco Rubio. Ah, the progressives, man. They, they were on the rise last night, man. That shit was... Dynamite, dynamite. The other quote. If there is anybody here that thinks corporate America gives a damn about the average American worker, you are mistaken. <laughs> Brother Bernie Sanders. Bernie got a lot of good ones off, man. And so did Elizabeth Warren. So let's go through. Um, <laughs> I hate to start out with the winners, but I'll, I'll, I'll uh, let's get through the losers. Marcus Conti reporting on the first part of the uh, presidential debate last night. Democratic presidential debate in um, Detroit, Michigan. Ten, ten car pile up on the stage. Democrats jockeying for position. So let's get, a, let's get the um, tomorrow night will be uh, Camilla Harris, uh, Joe Biden, Tulsi Gabbard, um, uh, Andrew Yang. We'll watch for those people tonight so so um, so I was watching you know I watched by myself that's what I do I sit there I drink my sparkling water and I try to make an assessment of what's going on you know and and um, you know right out of the gate was John Delaney in his opening statement they gave an opening statement which was very nice everybody gave a one-minute opener and John Delaney came right out and stabbed Bernie Sanders and Warren in the Elizabeth Warren in the back he said free stuff <laughs> so John Delaney was the was was basically the quintessential fool, the bald guy who looks like the drummer from Red Hot Chili Peppers. He looks like uh, the comic on on fucking Saturday Night Live. Uh, bald jerk off, all Republican talking points. If you like Republican talking points, then go go ahead. If you don't think that corporate America is raping the country and, and such, then John Delaney's your guy. He's the Republican in the Democratic uh, uh, Democratic uh, primary. <laughs> if you want to vote for a, a Democratic Republican, he's your guy, right? So he he was uh, he was bring back TTP. He's a basic basically a, a corporatist a corporatist scumbag is what he is, right? So uh, again, the, the 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 disqualifiers were Steve Bollock. He he was an empty suit. He was uh, probably the worst of the worst. Although he claims to be some sort of progressive, he wasn't able to get get his uh, message out there. He wasn't able to sell it, so he's out. Delaney, like I said, he's probably he was probably the most dangerous of all of them because he's the he, he's the he's the sheep. He's the he's the wolf in sheep's clothing. He's selling corporatist, you know, Wall Street ideas on a Democratic stage of progressives that want to eliminate that stuff that want to give power back to the people he's there pitching pitching the other side of it right so Delaney out um, who else so oh Hink Hinkenlooper hi Hinkenlooper 
He was like a little, he looked like, um, again, another corporatist nobody. I just want to get them out of the way. Why these people are still, is a centrist, bad dude. I didn't like him at all. Um, there's, uh, there's Amy Klobuchar, Klobuchar, you know, boring, you know, like the, like the second grade school teacher that, that wants to tell you right from the center how, how you can't dream big. Don't dream big. Dream small. Be, be reasonable. Get a, have a nice conservative life for yourself. Uh, just sell your shit down the road, right? That's what, that's what Amy Klobuchar <laughs> was all about, in my view. Uh, we're going to get to the good stuff. Just get these shit sandwiches out of the way, man. Marianne Faithful Williamson. Marianne. Oh, Marianne. The spiritual leader. The spiritual leader of the Oprah cult. <sighs> Hopefully it'll be the last time we see her. I mean, she was. She said some interesting stuff. She's very poetic, and she actually had a moment here and there of clarity. But she wants to give. Uh, it's about blacks. She has to give blacks five hundred billion dollars in free money re rep reparation. But it's not free because they were slaves. <laughs> so she was pitching that slave shit, and the you know the black commentator loved it. Oh. I'm Gave her extra time. Talk about the blacks. Blacks give so fucking give anybody a half a billion dollars and they'll vote for you, right? Is that the idea? Buying influence. Uh, so she's a shit sandwich. She shouldn't be on the stage in the first place. I don't know how she squeaked in. As the Democrats, it's a, it's a testament to the way the Democrats are. They want a lot of candidates. The whole purpose is to not get Bernie Sanders enough time to get his 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 message out there. And he's fighting just to get his, you know, just to get uh, get heard. But the good news is that Elizabeth Warren had his back. That was beautiful to watch. They both had each other's back. Now, who won out of those two? I, I don't, it doesn't, at this point, it doesn't matter. I think Bernie Sanders won, but because all the policies on the table last night, uh, health care, um, you know, uh, get money out of politics. The financial issues of corporate corruption are all Bernie Sanders talking points. They're all inspired and authored by Bernie Sanders. So they're arguing the the Republican Democrats, conservative, whatever the hell they are, idiots, are arguing against Bernie Sanders, which gave Bernie Sanders more time to explain. Um, but they're arguing Bernie Sanders' points. They don't have points of their own. They're about, go back to the way it was, the way it is. Right? So if, if, if the Republican Democrats on that stage want things to, to be the way they are, then just vote for Trump. <laughs> Why do we need you? Why do we want to look at your stupid, bald, arrogant head, Mr. Delaney? Well, we just vote for Trump. Right, and get fucked, you know, continue to get screwed for another four more years. Lied to, thrown into wars, give all our profits to the corporations that they steal the money. Why do we need you to do that? We already, we already got a guy doing that. So, um, Tim Ryan uh, got burned. Bernie Sanders fucking smoked this guy, right? I like Tim Ryan. I, I thought he was, he's the most human of all of them. He's just fundamentally wrong on the issues, right? He, he doesn't, he's not for universal single-payer health care. He's, he's from Ohio, the Rust Belt. You don't think that the people of Ohio, look, the, the first half hour of the, of the debate was about health care in America. And that argument was dominated by a single-payer, universal single-payer health care system, arguing for it, the progressives. And Tim Ryan had a different view. He actually told Bernie Sanders... That you don't know what you're doing. No, Bernie, that's not true about um, old people getting dental and uh, vision and hearing aids. And Tim Ryan said, no, Bernie. And Bernie said, no, I wrote the bill. <laughs> God damn it. I wrote the damn bill, Bernie said. I wrote the damn bill. He, the guy's, this moron is telling, telling Bernie Sanders, you don't know what's in the bill. And Bernie Sanders wrote the bill. So, he's disqualified. So, so you got Tim Ryan out of the way, Delaney, 
Marianne Faithful, Steve Bullock, Klobuchar was just horrible. Hinkle Looper, a, 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 a fucking, I don't even, I don't know why, you know, what Elizabeth Warren said, said it best. Why, if you're not willing to dream big and have big ideas and big change for America, why are you running for president? For what? For power? I want to be the president? See, that's how Amy Klobuchar comes off. That's how Hinkenlooper comes off. That's how certainly uh, Bullock and, and uh, not Bullock, I'm sorry, uh, John, John Delaney. Marianne Faithful has no idea why she's running for president. She just thinks it's fun. <laughs> so, so that leaves us the three, the three, runner, the three number ones. Now, I'm going to be very generous with Pete Buttigieg because he had a great night. Pete Buttigieg is young, 37, very smart, very, um, very good in, in the frame. He knows how to talk. He's, he's, he knows how to put people at ease. But at the, at the, at the, as, at the core of that is that he's not for single-payer health care. He's a, he's a centrist Democrat who will sell you down the road. He's an old-fashioned Democrat who'll try to stand in the middle of the aisle of Congress and, and negotiate the fistfight of corporate Democrats and corporate Republicans all taking money from the corporations, and then he'll say, okay, well, uh, yeah, well, fight it out, and I'll sign it. That would be uh, Pete Buttigieg, I ineffectual loser. Uh, you know, j just, uh, you know, the whole, g I I'll take back that gay stuff. Who, who cares, right, really? He's a, he'll be the first gay president some people say Obama was the first gay president <laughs> and then Michelle Obama is really a man <laughs> you guys really believe that people really believe that Michelle Obama is a man or was a man I tell you man you guys you guys are right up there you should go follow the fucking guy that that thinks that there's um, that there's you know there's a baby a human baby colonies on Mars for incest you know go follow that guy if you're you know flat earth and fucking come on man come on she's got she's got a vagina Michelle Obama I I would suspect though I've never seen it but I would suspect it so I diverge so the winners Pete Buttigieg I gave him third place I'm gonna give second place to Elizabeth Warren simply because She's fighting. She did great. She she's very she was very articulate. She was very able to to get that message out there that if you don't fix the corruption, nothing will change. If you don't fix the the the, the money in politics, the corporate tyranny that this country is experiencing, the boot on our throat, absolutely nothing will change. And I think Elizabeth Warren was spectacular at voicing that. But again, there wasn't any, the, the real specifics. She was very specific on single-payer health care. Um, I don't like her, her, her view that, again, she's for, you know, affirmative action. Um, giving, giving, um, she wants to give $50 billion a year to black colleges. I don't, I don't like that shit, right? So... So the main issues. Let's just talk about the issues, and then I'll, 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 I'll um, uh, uh, bathe in the in the Bernie Sanders victory. <laughs> uh, so the first part of the debate was about health care, right? One hundred percent behind it. Right? It's it's about universal single payer health care, Medicare for all. The single payer is the United States government. We eliminate the 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 um, the pharmaceutical uh, boot on our throat, and we eliminate the insurance companies that have so much power and so much influence and siphon so many millions and millions and billions of dollars out of the healthcare system that it's almost uncountable and inconceivable at this point. So that was the the fundamental front and center argument in last night's debate. Now, other debates could have been there, which was get money out of politics, but it wasn't, right? 
it, it was it was only there when Bernie Sanders mentions it. But unfortunately, because you're on a corporatist stage, the corporate, um, you know, corporations that sponsor it, it's their, it's their, it's their um, debate. They're calling the rules. They're picking the questions. They're determining who should be on the stage and who shouldn't. Right. So, so what was talked about was immigration, which I fundamentally disagree with the uh, Democrats. I think there should be, you know, immigration reform of some sort. I think it should still be criminal if someone enters the country. I like criminal. It should be criminal and you could be you should be criminally held if you enter the country illegally. Right? The Democrats are arguing no, it should be a civil case. And then what happens is in a civil case everybody gets you know, health care and all that stuff, right? And and benefits and welfare and whatever else they need, right? So, I, I mean, I disagree with that, that platform. On race, they're still arguing, you know, 19, it's like 1960 Archie Bunker that the blacks are so, so the, you know, so um, in need of help and reparation and affirmative action and that they're so discriminated against that it's unbelievable. And every cop in America is shooting bullets at them. <clears throat> it's just not the case. It's not helping the, the, the issue of race in America. It just, it just, it, it's a failing, um, sh if you could call it a strategy to win. It's a totally failing strategy. You shouldn't, you don't want that. And every time they say it, it gives Trump ammunition. Every time Trump shows the shows, if if Trump says your country, your your state of uh, your city of Baltimore that you represent is a shithole, and and is uh, is rat infested and and homeless everywhere, that's your fucking problem. And and when Trump says that to a congressman, the guy turns out turns around and says, "You are racist." Trump wins. Trump wins every time, right? So it's a failing strategy. Why? Because people don't want to hear it because they see that just because you can't win the argument, you, you cry racism. That's the race card. Trump plays it magnificently from the other side, but he's the dealer. Trump deals the race card and the, and the racists, racists take the bait. So that is a failed strategy, and that's why Elizabeth Warren would probably be, you know, a, a decent vice president if she would just shut up on those issues of race. When, when, when Sanders is asked about reparation, he goes back to, let's just build, let's just build the shitty, the shitty slums, the cities that are affected most by poverty. That's all he says. He doesn't say give, you know, give a billion, $500 billion to historical blacks. So, on gun control, I also disagree. Democrats are, look, maybe, just maybe, 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 it is a good idea to have some kind of background check. So you don't have mass murderers running around with guns. Uh, I mean, is that too, too much to ask? Is it, is it too much to ask that we don't allow some types of guns, like, Maybe fucking rocket, you know, rocket launchers and, 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 um, you know, and, and super machine guns. And so I don't know. Like, I don't know. I think like if it were my world, I would have a, a open carry where maybe you should, you should, you might have to take a test to see if you can shoot a gun, like a driving test. I, in, in my world that, that no one is disqualified, the, the, the um, Second Amendment is the Second Amendment. The right to bear arms. You should be able to wear it right on your side. That's how I feel. I don't think guns cause the violence. I think mental illness causes the violence. I think violence is generated through poverty and such. Right? Um, hmm. Because it's just invading my empty space. Bicycles. The terrorists. They hate me. So the reparation reparation uh, argument is ridiculous. They talked a little bit about war, a very little bit about 
about counterinsurgency wars. They could have been more focused there, but that's not part of the corporate agenda because in the eyes of the corporate agenda, we're not doing enough. We should have more war. Military industrial complex, build it up. So Bernie Sanders, ah, Bernie Sanders. Did he, did he, did he, did he sell us out? Did Bernie Sanders sell us out in 2016? Or is he there right now for everybody? Hmm. I don't know. It seems like he's, he's, you know, he's, he's been one step ahead a lot of times. And this might be one of them where <laughs> the whole discussion last night. It was about his policies, about his ideas, about his vision. Bernie Sanders wins. Is he, is he, is he, he looks like he's on the edge of, of manic. Very excitable. Is he clear and coherent? Can he lead the country? I think so. I think so. He gets, he got worked up in that, in that, um, not the greatest presentation, whatever that means. If, if we were talking about presentation, I would have to give it to Pete Buttigieg, but Pete Buttigieg doesn't stand for anything. Pete Buttigieg is just a, it's just a guy who wants to be the president and he's very articulate. A young, articulate man who wants to be the president, like Obama. He'll say anything to get elected. It's about personal power. With Sanders, I genuinely, genuinely believe that it's about, um, it's about power for the people. Uh, he's old-fashioned in some ways with the union fights. A lot of the unions have failed people. The unions are deeply corrupted. Uh, but the corporations are more corrupt. The fact... I was trying to explain to someone last night the, the fiat money system. And right now, Trump is trying to lower the, um, the, the prime rate, the financial... the uh, interest rate that banks trade with each other and borrow money from the federal government to lower it that'll be the first time they lowered it throughout Obama it was zero so banks were able to borrow money free without any real obligation to pay it back lend it to you at 19 25 50 percent profit from that not pay back the initial sum and the federal government is just willing to keep giving them more and more money and what they do is they pay themselves, you know, $23 million compensation. They use that money to buy stocks in the open market and drive their stock price up because their compensation is linked to stock price. It's a bubble. The money that the banks are using to stimulate this economy is fictitious, really. Now, you could argue it doesn't matter. That that's just the way the economy is. That's just the way it is. And... $20 trillion in debt doesn't matter. Now, if you believe that, then Trump's your guy. But when it collapses, when it falls like it did in 08, and we bailed them out, when it falls this time, I mean, what? This is what you tell the banks if it fails again, right? Because they're, they're currently involved in all these fiat systems and these, um, these derivative markets that people don't even know what they are. Half the time, like Goldman Sachs and, and J.P. Morgan and and, and, you know, Wells Fargo, they're probably involved in, in these kind of derivative markets that no one even understands. And when they collapse, then they'll tell us, oh, by the way, you, you know, we need, uh, we need uh, $2 trillion in fresh printed money to get us out of this. Or the banks are going to freeze. Or we're gonna to we're gonna, you're going to suffer. <laughs> right? That's what they'll tell everybody, right? So that's the system we have. I was telling a friend that, and... They were like, you mean that there's, where does the money come from? It's like, they just print it. They don't even print it anymore. They just, it's just computer entry. That's all it is. And then, and it goes, it goes onto the debt list. And the banks just spend that money as they will. It's a, it's a broken system. They don't do it for people, but they do it for, for a financial system that only steals the money and gives it to a very few people distributes it among, amongst the 1%. That is the fundamental problem in our country. And this, the, the, this president does not represent one iota of change, but represents throwing gas on that problem by empowering corporations that don't reciprocate, 
you know, they don't give, they don't pay tax. They don't do anything, right? They just, they, you know, they just take. They don't give, right? And Bernie Sanders is the author of that theory of taking back power. Uh, and therefore, he wins the night. He wins, he wins so far, right? Does Russiagate matter anymore? Hmm. It only matters if you want it to matter. Are the elections rigged? Yeah. Does it does it does it change does it change anything the ability for a guy like Bernie Sanders to run and exceed the margin of cheating with millions of people behind him? Maybe Elizabeth Warren as his running mate? Because that was a tag team, man. Ah, I love it. They went you, people everybody wanted him to go toe to toe. And instead they went they went heel to heel fighting off the off- the offense. Love that, man. They went they were back they they had each other's back. And that's rare in the Democratic Party. That's rare. That's a that's a strength right there. Does it take away from Bernie Sanders? People would argue, yeah, it does, but in the final analysis if Bernie Sanders and and um and Elizabeth Warren are running neck and neck in the end, and they and and together they capture more than 50 percent of the uh, the pledged delegates at the convention. The one who has less can simply give give the amount of pledged delegates to the one who has more, and would push him over the 50 percent mark. And then, as a as a kickback, oh by the way, you're going to be the vice president. Uh, so it could. They could game the system if they if they um, join forces, and you know if some of the other progressives drop out quick enough, if Andrew Yang doesn't make it through the hoop, if I think Tulsi Gabbard should drop out tomorrow and start supporting Bernie Sanders, uh, maybe that other guy, the other progressive, John, whatever the fuck his name is, I don't know, get behind Sanders. So it's a tremendous victory for Sanders in the sense that. Again, they're arguing his policies. Single-payer health care, although I don't agree on the gun control, the way they're going to handle immigration, uh, the, 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 their view, the democratic view on race, I can put all of that aside if you're going to go after the banks, if you're going to address the financial problem in this country that's killing the country, right? That's killing it. And... and, 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 ta- and d- and deflate the billionaires. If that's what you're about, I'm with you. I'm with you. You can keep all your kooky social issues to yourself. I don't give a shit. Because it doesn't really matter. That doesn't matter to me. Really, race. I don't care about that. That, that Some people care about that. Let them care about it. I don't care about that. I, I don't care about it because I don't think it matters. I think that if you fix the economic problems in this country of people fighting over crumbs... A lot of those social tensions go away. A lot of the, the, the issues of, of drug addiction and homelessness go away. They go away because we address them in a, in a, uh, in a, in a dignified way, in a financially responsible way, rather than just ignore it and expect corporations to trickle it down. So Marcus Conti reporting tonight. We'll see the part two. Uh, Camilla Harris faces off against Joe Biden. You know, again, I don't expect there to be any any issues of substance talked about. Maybe they'll talk about how Bernie Sanders kicked ass. <laughs> they might have to attack Bernie, you know, because because he's first of all he's not on the stage, and second of all he clearly won the debate. Now, if you're if you if you're waiting for for corporate America to tell you who won the debate, they'll 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 give you some stupid analysis I'm not even gonna watch it CNN or MSNBC because it doesn't matter those 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 outlets don't matter anymore and isn't that a beautiful thing the fact that they really they really have no no juice no teeth anymore that we are leading the discussion you me other people that that are paying attention it's a beautiful thing Marcus Conti reporting